API standard 1104, 10, repair and removal of weld defects. Gary A. Pace, PE, CWI, Katy, Texas. Learning objectives. We're going to talk about 10.1 general. We're going to talk about authorization for repair. 10.3, repair procedure. 10.4, repair welder qualification. 10.5, supervision. And 10.6, acceptance criteria. General, weld defects may be identified during visual or non-destructive testing or during the company's review of non-destructive testing results. Authorization for repair. Company authorization. Company authorization is required for crack repairs, back weld repairs, and double repairs, and otherwise noted as in 10.2. Company authorization is not required for any repairs that do not involve the application of heat or weld metal, such as grinding, filing, etc. So if you can grind it out and get it to go good, you don't need authorization. But if you're going to weld on it or you're going to use heat, company needs to know. You need company authorization before you dig in there. 10.3. Repair of defects other than cracks. Defects other than cracks in the root, filler, and finish beads may be repaired with prior company authorization. A qualified repair procedure shall be required whenever a repair is made by welding. When using a welding process, combination of welding processes, or method of application or filler metals different from that used to make the original weld, or repairs are made in a previously welded repair area or required by the company. So you got to have a repair procedure is what it's telling you. So, um, you know, and this is for other than cracks. Qualified repair procedures shall be required whenever a repair is made by a welding lamp. So it just goes through and tells you you're probably going to need a repair procedure for most situations. Grinding repairs. Grinding repairs may be used to remove defects in the reinforcement of the roof beads and cover passes provided there is a smooth transition free of undercutting and other imperfections between the ground area and the original weld and pipe surface contour and the minimum wall thickness of the weld thickness requirements are not violated. It's telling you you just can't go berserk with the grinder. All right, I got a deep gouge here. I can, you know, blend it in. Well, if you violate the minimum wall thickness, you're going to be in trouble. If minimum wall weld thickness is not known, the grinding depth is limited to the excess root bead penetration or external reinforcement. The grinding repair length and number of grinding repair areas is not limited. Grinding repairs do not require the use of a qualified repair procedure. So if you have something that goes wrong in the reinforcement of the weld, you can grind it off. You don't need a qualified repair procedure for that. But the key with grinding repairs is you don't want to violate that minimum wall thickness. So you need to be careful there. Back weld repairs. When back weld repairs are permitted by the company, a repair procedure shall be qualified in accordance with 10.3. 10.3, repair procedure. 10.3.1, general. When a repair procedure is required, the procedure shall be established and qualified to demonstrate that a repair weld with suitable mechanical properties and soundness can be produced. The repair weld shall meet the minimum requirements of the production weld or as otherwise specified by the company. Ten three two Types of Repair Procedures Types of repair procedures may include but are not limited to the following. Full thickness repair, internal partial thickness repair, external partial thickness repair, cover pass repair, or a back weld repair. So depending on what kind of repair you're doing, you're going to have different procedures. So you need to have it written down and um, realize that there are, isn't just one type of procedure that could be required for repairs, depending on what your situation is. 1034, specification information. The repair procedure as a minimum shall include the following. So you're basically going to cover everything in a repair procedure that you covered in your welding procedure. Um, welding processes, uh, 
non-destructive testing, filler metal control, fluxes, um, repair type, procedure limitations, time delay, if any, before final inspection. You're just going to address all this information. 1034 gives you the specification information that you need to put into your repair procedure. Essential variables. A repair procedure shall re be reestablished as a new repair procedure and shall be requalified when any of the essential variables listed in 542 or the following are changed. Changes other than those given in 542 or below may be without the need for requalification provided the repair procedure is revised to show changes. So if you change an essential variable, you got to do a new procedure. If you switch from gas metal arc welding to TIG welding, it's a you're changing things. You're changing an essential variable. You're going to have to requalify. Everything else could be the same, but if you switch processes, you've got to requalify. That's what it's telling us. Change the essential variables, you got to requalify. And here's some of the essential variables, type of repair, preheat and inner pass temperature. Um, you know, just some things you need to look at as far as essential variables. Repair welder qualification. 10.4 lays out repair welder qualification. Um, qualified with experienced methods used for repairs of a defective weld. The welder shall be qualified in accordance with 6.2 and 6.3 in addition to the requirements of this section. So repair welders, you have to qualify as a welder and in addition, this section. Um, a welder shall be qualified using the equipable repair procedure. Um, details of repair welder qualification shall be recorded and maintained with complete results of a qualification test for each type and location of repair to meet the requirements of 6.8. So if you're going to qualify welders to do repairs, you got to have keep paperwork on them too. Supervision. The repair shall be made under the supervision of an individual acceptable to the company who is experienced and knowledgeable in methods and procedures used for repair. Inspection of repairs shall be performed as specified by the company. Welding inspection personnel shall meet the requirements of 8.3. Repairs shall be documented and maintained by the company. So you got to have somebody in charge of this thing. You know, the supervision, whether it's an engineer, a welding supervisor, the welding superintendent, whoever, you should be knowledgeable in repairs and procedures used for repairs. You shouldn't just get a guy straight off the truck and put him in charge or the newbie out of the office. You probably want somebody that's a little battle hardened and a battle tested in charge of repair situations. Acceptance criteria, repaired areas shall be inspected and evaluated by the same NDT methods previously used to determine the defect. You can't switch NDT methods and say, oh, well, we used this one last time. Let's say we used ultrasonic testing to find it last time, and we're going to use RT this time, knowing that maybe it isn't as stringent. Um, A repair weld, note, a repair weld originally inspected and rejected using an alternative acceptance criteria derived in accordance with Annex A must be reinspected and meet the acceptance, the standards of acceptability of Section 9 or the more stringent acceptance criteria as specified by the company. Summary. We just covered, you know, repair, repair procedures, repair welder qualifications, supervision, and acceptance criteria.